Now let's understand the concept of cross hedging, something which we have just mentioned uh, on the previous slide. So as we know, cross hedging is required whenever the asset underlying the futures is different than the asset being hedged. So one example can be relating jet fuel requirements versus uh, what all things are available. So imagine that there is an airline company and they wish to procure jet fuel. And let's say an exact contract is not available on the exchange. So they could go in for some other quantity or some other uh, asset whose futures are transacting, which is very closely re related to the way in which jet fuel prices move. So let's say it's heating oil futures. So that way, the requirement for hedging their exposure or hedging the prices of jet fuel can be done via taking positions in heating oil futures. So we have prepared a small example of this to understand how exactly this is done. So the main idea behind cross hedging is based on the concept of correlation. So we know that correlation explains the relationship between two variables or rather it explains the strength of relationship between two variables. That is whether the two variables are uh, positively correlated or negatively correlated, etc. So, so that's where, uh, so that, that becomes the main premise on which the cross hedging concept is based. Now, based on this, we calculate what we call as a minimum variance hedge ratio. So the idea behind minimum variance hedge ratio is to calculate a ratio in such a way that we are trying to minimize the variance of our hedge. So the mathematically, this is given as rho SF into sigma S by sigma F, where S is the spot price and F is the futures price. And rho is nothing but the coefficient of correlation between the two price changes. And sigma S is the standard deviation of spot price changes and sigma F is the standard deviation of future price changes. Uh, always remember that whenever we are calculating quantities like correlation, standard deviations, etc., we should always look at the change in the quantities which have happened. So something which we'll see in the next uh, table as well, where we are demonstrating this via simple example. Whenever we are calculating a standard deviation, we should always, uh, through standard deviation, what we are trying to understand is the measure of dispersion. So. For that, we need to take into consideration the differences which are observed in the quantity. So imagine that there is a price series available. Then I will need to take the difference between those, between that price series. So that difference price series is something which I will require in the uh, calculation of my standard deviation. I cannot simply use the price levels because uh, whenever we are talking from uh, relationships like correlation, etc., it's important that we are taking into consideration the amount of change which is observed in a certain quantity and that is something which gets plugged into the correlation calculator and similarly for standard deviation as well. So H star is the quantity which we are trying to uh, calculate which we call as the minimum variance hedge ratio and uh, let's see how this will help us arrive at an optimal number of contracts which are required as a part of uh, this futures transaction. So the number of optimal contracts is given as N star, we we'll call it as N star and H star is the minimum variance hedge ratio which we just discussed into QA by QF. So QA is the size of the position being hedged and QF is the size of one futures contract and H star is the hedge ratio. So let's try to plug this into a simple example and understand how this gets used or how exactly we are going to calculate the optimal number of contracts which are required for hedging our position. So let's take an example of an airline company which wishes to buy 2 million gallons of jet fuel in one month's time. And for that, they are going to use heating oil futures for hedging. So the reason can be that uh, there may not be jet fuel futures which are transacting on, on the index. So for that, they may have to go in for some other quantity which is closely correlated with, uh, with their requirement, which is jet fuel. And that happens to be heating oil. So they decide to use heating oil futures in order to hedge their requirements for uh, the purchase of jet fuel in the future at a certain point of time which we say one month and we have been given the monthly data of the changes in the spot and the changes in the futures price uh, over successive period of 15 months so in the first table we have plotted this data so imagine this is the historical data which is available with us so we have let's say we have access to the last 15 month end datas or maybe average of the uh, numbers for SNF and we have calculated changes in these prices. 
Now, as I mentioned, when we are calculating quantities like correlation, standard deviation, etc., it is important that we focus on the change in a certain quantity. So that's why you say that we have calculated change in the futures prices and a change in spot prices. Now, using these numbers, we can run this into a simple Excel calculator. So Excel has a standard deviation STD DEV function, which we can use to calculate sigma S and sigma F, which so if you focus on the working table here, we calculate the standard deviation. This is sigma S. Sigma F is nothing but the standard deviation in the changes in the futures prices. And we have the correlation parameter. So the row SF, which we have written. Now I plug this into the formula for H star, which is nothing but rho SF into sigma S by sigma F. And by plugging in these three numbers, we come to a hedge ratio of 0 0.778. Now, uh, imagine that we are uh, using futures which are transacting on NYMEX. And we know for NYMEX, let's say 42,000 gallons of heating oil futures is, uh, so that is the underlying for each contract. So that you can imagine as the lot size for the heating oil futures, which is 42,000 gallons. So the optimal number of contracts required comes out to be 37. So how do we get to 37? We simply take our hedge ratio. So if I just take a step back, I'll be using this formula for N star. So we have a H star, which has been calculated as 0 0.778 into QA is the position to be hedged, which is 2 million. upon the number of futures contracts uh, that is what we are trying to estimate so and we have every futures contract which is 42000 so if we solve this simple equation we get a number of 37 so that's all i have done i have simply plugged this into the formula for n star and we have calculated the optimal number of contracts so if the airline company goes long these many number of contracts, they are going to hedge their position so that uh, they don't have to worry about the fluctuations which are going to be observed in the jet fuel prices uh, one month down the line. So this is an example of cross hedging. Now, uh, just, to, uh, just to do a quick recap, we do cross hedging whenever we don't have a matching futures contract, which is uh, exactly as per the requirements of the position which we are trying to hedge. So in this case, our requirement was hedging a position in uh, jet fuel prices. But we, let's say we don't have a futures contract which has jet fuels as the underlying, but we have heating oil as the underlying. So that's why we use heating oil futures in order to hedge our position. And this is one of the examples of cross hedging.